welcome for the first time or maybe you've been here before and if you have been here before well thank you as well i'm bold reviews lady my channel is talk to the hand reviews and uh today i'm excited to talk about a classic fragrance norel uh this was considered was billed as the first designer fragrance made in the United States. And the designer's name was Norman Norell. So I've got some more things to tell you about it. But first I want to tell you about my dress. Let's see if you can see me at all. This beautiful dress. Isn't this dress pretty? It's got these frilly, frilly bottom. I know you can't really see that, but I walked by this dress in Winners in Canada and I saw it full price and I was like, oh, I love that dress. I'd love to get that dress. And then we came back like a couple months later during the clearance and because I didn't buy it because I, I didn't really have a, a reason to buy it at the time. And so I got this dress at Winners in Canada and I saw it and I, you know, I didn't really have uh, a need to buy it at the time, but I was like, oh, I just love that dress so much. And then I, uh, I went back a little bit later on when they had one of their big sales and this dress was on sale with a giant discount. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I want that dress. So I got it. And then something really interesting about it, which kind of blew my mind was you ever go to UPC Lookup, you can, sometimes if you get things on a discount or a clearance or something like that, the original tag is still there. And you can go to UPC Lookup and type in the UPC barcode label number. And sometimes it doesn't work, but sometimes it does. And it showed me this dress for sale in a mall in the Beverly Hills area where I used to work in the in the 90s. I, I don't remember, uh, it wasn't, uh, I don't know if it was the mall from the mall I worked at or not, but it was from a department store and I worked at one of the only department stores in the area. This was in Los Angeles. Now I live in the uh, east coast of Canada. This dress found me from my old hood. Well, it wasn't my hood. I just worked in the hood. Anyways. So today I want to tell you about... Norel, 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 Norel. Yes, yes. This fragrance. I shall spray. This, look at this vintage bottle. This is my vintage... My vintage bottle. The juice still smells great. This one, I know really well because my mom loved it. And uh, also, when I first had my first cosmetics job, working at a department store in the Orange County area, I worked for a company called Ultima 2, which was like an upscale Revlon. And we sold Norel as part of our line, along with uh, Ciara, a fragrance called Maroc, uh, and I think some other ones, but Norel was one of those. So I have some information about Norel. Norman Norel. Uh, was an American designer and he actually passed away in 1972 the same year that this fragrance was released and uh, Charles Revson from Revlon apparently uh, approached him and suggested that he um, produce manufacture a fragrance with Norel's name on it through the Revlon company so Norel was billed as the, what is it? Okay, Norman Norell, like Oscar de la Renta, 
was famous for dressing first ladies, among other things. He, uh, he dressed, oh, and movie stars too. He dressed Lauren Bacall, Marilyn Monroe, Marilyn Monroe. Hey. You know what I realized? There was some stuff I didn't even know about uh, Norman Norell and his, his designs. And I have to share this with you because I think it's, it's amazing. Um, I just was saying that he designed and Marilyn Monroe was one of the people that he designed for, but I had no idea that he designed the famous white dress from the seven year itch, the one that gets blown, blown up, not blown up, the one that she's standing over the subway grating and it blows the skirt up. That's Norman Norell. I had no idea. Um, another ridiculously famous uh, dress that he created for her was the famous one. Um, now, yeah, the famous one where she sang happy birthday, happy birthday to you, Mr. President, you know, to Kennedy and John Kennedy. And that dress was recently, I believe, taken out of a museum. And this is the one that Kim Kardashian wore that caused such a stir, you know, such polarized feelings. Oh, she shouldn't have done it. Or, oh yeah, she should have done it. I actually don't mind it. I thought it was okay for her to take it out of, you know, the, the past and bring it into the future. I mean, the Kardashians are famous and they will be famous when you look back at them. So I don't think there's any need to like, you know, be negative towards Kim Kardashian because she chose to, you know, get Marilyn's dress. I thought it was pretty cool, but it was Norman Norell. And also, um, of course I said other movie stars and other first ladies, but I also found out that Michelle Obama, she's so classy, for uh, she wore a vintage Norell gown for, um, well, I think it must be Christmas, but it was, might have been early on in their, uh, the Obama administration. I, I don't know, but look at that dress. I mean, and she's so classy to do that too, to wear vintage Norman Norell. So those are just some other things that I didn't realize about what he has created and uh, like so much more, so much more than that. But no one hears of him nowadays, you know? So anyhow, just wanted to uh, add that. Jackie Kennedy uh, and Laura Bush. Um, oh yeah, their tagline was Norell, the first great perfume born in America. However, he was not actually the first person, the first designer to create in, in the United States. It was, where's my note for it? Oh, Gilbert Adrian in 1945 came out with a duo of fragrances called Saint and Sinner, and he was an American designer. So it's not exactly true that Norman Norrell was the first American designer to have a fragrance with his name on it, or to have a fragrance. Like Norrell, uh, Norrell, Revlon just kind of jumped in there and claimed it, but it's not necessarily true. But um, some other things about this, the nose is Josephine Catapano, uh, some of the fragrances that she created are Estee Lauder Youth Do. I know you. I know you've heard of that. Um, Estee Lauder Cinnabar. You may not have heard of that because I think it's gone now. But that was another beautiful fragrance, kind of along the lines of opium. You know, a, um, a real spicy fragrance. And she also created Ralph Lauren Chaps. Well, that's interesting. And none of those fragrances smell anything like Norel. Okay. Now I want to tell you my feelings about this fragrance. I feel like this, and this is a, this was in my storage unit for all those years. 
This was one of my bottles. I'm sure I had at least one, but I was so happy that there was a little bit of juice left in the bottom when I got this out of my storage unit and that it still smells fantastic because this, I would have had to have gotten it in the late 80s because I didn't sell it after that. I probably didn't buy it after that. Or probably no one gave it to me for free either, which also does happen. I don't remember if they gave us, if Dorel gave us a uh, product or not. We used to call it gratis. But this fragrance is so special to me. And I think this is among the most sophisticated, uh, this smells, this does smell like a first lady would wear it. It's very, it smells royal. It smells anything that has class. That's what this smells like to me. Along the lines of Chanel number no. five, uh, first by Van Cleef and Arpels is another one that's kind of a similar vibe and kind of smells similar too. And another one, uh, well, I'll tell you about that one in a minute. Okay, Norel, oh Norel. Oh, we used to have it at Christmas time. They used to, the gift sets would come in and then they'd have, they had nice Norel gift sets. They had with the lotion and powder and, oh, it was really great, but they don't make it anymore. I found that they, somebody reimagined it a few years back and put it up for sale. Um, what was it? Did I write that down? A nine, in 96, someone reimagined it. I'd love to try that. I did see the ad for it, or they, it was like a home shopping club kind of thing. They, they did that and it was a really good deal and it was, it looked, ex it was gorgeous. They had like the uh, eau de parfum, um, I think they had a lotion, they had a shower gel, something like that. But the thing, and it was only like, it was less than hundred bucks for all three. It was gorgeous, but it was a reimagined version. So what that means is anyone's guess really, but I still would have got, would have loved to have gotten a hold of that. Oh, and Borghese used to make a fragrance, I don't know if they still do, called Di Borghese. That's similar to Norel as well. But I really can't think of other things that remind me of Norel so much. So I hope you know some of those. But now you say, Bo, 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 Reviews Lady. What's it smell like? One of the things I like doing is talking about these old fragrances that aren't either aren't around anymore to buy, or maybe they're still there, but maybe it smells different from how it used to. So I try to find, I go to Fragrantica, and it's a really good fragrance website. And I find what other people thought this fragrance smells like. So, you know, I told you what I think, but they think, drum roll, do, 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 do. 26 people thought it smelled like Fiji from Guy La Roche. I don't think, I don't think so. I remember Fiji, but I don't, I don't think it smelled like this, but hey, that was what people, the Fragrantica people, they usually know their noses. They really do. They're not there for nothing. They're real fragrance files. fragrance files. Okay, 22 people thought it smelled like Charisma from Avon. Okay. 11 people felt it smelled like Histoire d'Amour from Albusan. Albusan. Eight people thought it smelled like Masumi from Koti. And uh, seven people felt it was like must two from Cartier. So there you go. There's five fragrances you may know that are very similar to Norel. And that ends my video. It's six o'clock. 
What time is it where you are? Um, this is kind of going to be a slow jam dance for us. I, I like the more upbeat stuff, really. But I already set up my screen for this, and it's hard to change it with the music. Anyways, you don't need to know my problems. Thank you again for joining me. Thank you for joining me here on Talk to the Hand Reviews. If you like this kind of content, I produce content on Mondays and Thursdays. And uh, it's usually cosmetics and fragrance and occasionally lifestyle, etc. And I thank you very much for joining me. Check out this cool ring. It was my mom's. It's a cocktail ring and it's really old. And this pretty bracelet, that's from Michael's Crafts. Isn't that cool? Okay.